there, Farmer Fern here with a quick and easy tutorial on how to prune your tomatoes. You know, every home gardener has their favorite way to go about this topic, whether it's letting their tomatoes crawl like a vine really wild across the garden, or pruning them all the way down to one single main stem. But today I'm going to show you a few of my favorite techniques for how to prune the tomatoes in your garden to maximize yield and disease resistance. This gardening tutorial is part of a video mini-series from Boundless Landscapes in the Boulder Public Library, generously supported by the Boulder Library Foundation. All right, let's get started. All right, so what I have here is a row of indeterminate heirloom plants, which most heirlooms are indeterminate. But whether you're working with a determinate or an indeterminate Terminant. It's getting hard to say that. The goal of pruning remains the same for all tomatoes. A, we want to remove excess organic matter so that we can increase airflow. And I always like to uh, mulch that organic matter back into the soil, which I'll show you in a little bit. Tomatoes are really, really susceptible to diseases, especially ones like early blight, uh, fusarium wilt, and septoria leaf spot. And so getting airflow into the plant is crucial in uh, helping prevent diseases and, um, you know, preventing overcrowding and diseases from humidity. We also want to increase yields. Uh, obviously, we want as many tomatoes as possible, especially in a gross, short growing season like here in Boulder. And so pruning your tomatoes can help increase yield. And lastly, we really want to create the ability to interplant beneath the tomato once it's reached a mature enough height. When the plant is mature, you can clean out any leaves from the base to uh, you know, plant a crop like basil, cilantro, marigolds, nasturtium, or even baby greens like lettuces. Right, here I am uh, knelt in this patch of indeterminate plants which we're going to use for demoing pruning today. Now I want to remind you of something very important before you even start working with your tomato plants. Um, it's a very good practice to get in the habit of sanitizing your, uh, your snips or your scissors or whatever you're using. You know, tomatoes are really disease susceptible so I like to clean off the snips with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol before I start. That way, you know, I'm not trim trimming this diseased tomato and then going over and trimming this healthy one and transferring that disease over, which can really easily happen with tomatoes. So go ahead and clean off your snips with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol. All right, so let's go over the anatomy of the tomato plant because that's really going to help inform how we uh, prune these tomatoes, be it determinate or indeterminate. So what you'll see here is a healthy, healthy main stem of our tomato plant. Um, you know, this is where all of the nutrients are going up and it's the piece of anatomy that uh, all of the rest of the anatomy grows off of. What you see right here, if you can, is a um, set of leaves purely for photosynthesis. So these will never turn into fruit. Their goal is to just take sunlight from um, the sun and then turn it into energy for the plant. And you know, these, your plant needs quite a few of these, but they do cause a bit of disease when they're touching other plants or touching the soil. So they're gonna be something we're paying attention to pruning today. And for the purpose of this video, I like to call these plants, or these parts of the plant, uh, the solar panels, because they're just converting all of that sunlight into energy. What we have here is a set of blossoms, actually. And so you'll see that these are the little yellow flowers that when pollinated, they um, set into the fruit, which is happening right here, if you can see it. And those are branching off of our main stem. And then let's see if I can find a good example. In these little crevices between the solar panels and the main stem are something called suckers. And so those are the tomato plant trying to grow more main stems. Now for the purpose of indeterminate tomatoes, I like to have one main stem the whole time um, because as that tomato grows upwards and all of its energy is channeled into that one stem, it's growing up, it's setting more fruit as it grows taller. And so pruning your tomato down to having one main stem is a great way to increase your yields with indeterminate tomatoes. So what I would do is simply go through here and say, all right, are any of these um, solar panels curled on the edges or spotty, you know, showing signs of disease? If so, you can just snip them back all the way at the main stem. If these solar panels are touching the soil, you definitely want to snip them out of there because they can carry disease from the soil up into the plant. Uh, they can also carry pests up that way. And so we just want to clear them out and make sure nothing from the tomato is touching the ground. All right, so this one's looking pretty good. We've done a lot of pruning this year. And now I wanna take a look and just make sure that I'm not missing any other little suckers that are growing and trying to become main stems. All right, so 
what we have here is one sucker that was growing from the armpit in between a uh, in between a solar panel and the main stem and you can tell it's a sucker because it has the rest of the tomato's anatomy so it's turning into a main stem and you can see it's trying to set some fruit right here and it also has little solar panels of its own. I'm going to go ahead and mulch this one back into the soil. If you live in a longer growing climate than here in Boulder, uh, you can go ahead and propagate those. You know. And so now our indeterminate tomatoes pruned. You know, we've cleaned up anything that's kind of inhibiting airflow, anything looking diseased or touching the um, ground. You know, this one, I'm not really loving this leaf here, this solar panel. It's just kind of heavy and not really doing too much anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and take that and print it into the ground. And uh, you know, now it's looking good. No signs of disease and only one main stem, which all of the fruit is setting off of. If this were an indeterminate, we would prune it in a really similar way. Um, all you want to do is locate the top flower bud. So imagine this is the top flower. Ignore everything growing up above it. <laughs> and so if this is the top flower bud, that means that tomato is done growing. It won't grow any taller after it's set these first flowers. It'll set some more and then pretty much all of your fruit will ripen at once um, on those. And so when you're pruning, you know, you might have a few extra little suckers that you could pinch off in the armpits. Generally, they stay pretty small. Um, but what you really want to prune for there is just removing any solar panels in the middle of the plant that are not getting sunlight and are just kind of clogging up the plant. All right, lastly, don't forget to return those nitrogen-rich clippings from your tomato plant back into the earth, either by, um, you know, putting them around the base of the tomato plant or putting them in your compost pile. You know, we just really don't want that nitrogen to go to waste, so might as well return it back into the system. So play with your pruning design this season, you know, and let me know what uh, works best for your space, your cultivar, and your trellising situation. You can go ahead and update us in the comments below about your favorite way to prune. And I just want to mention that Boundless Landscapes, the Boulder Public Library, and the Boulder Library Foundation are um, partnering with the City of Boulder, CSU Extension, and numerous nonprofits to um, encourage backyard veggie growers to donate a portion of their yields this season to organizations in the community that serve those who are struggling with food insecurity. And this effort is called the Grow and Give Campaign and you can find a little bit about it at the link at the end of this video. All right, thanks so much. We hope you'll join us for the rest of this gardening mini uh, video tutorials. And um, you know, happy pruning.